So today Ford has debuted the 2024 Ranger and Ranger Raptor. First, let's talk about the regular Ranger. As you can see, styling is pretty much the same as the global truck that debuted last year, but it still looks really good and is a lot more muscular than the old Ranger. All Rangers get an improved, fully boxed, high strength steel frame, along with a wheelbase that's about two inches longer and a track that's about two inches wider. Ford says this provides more bed space and improved stability while remaining easy to navigate on trails. They all get outboard mounted rear shocks too for improved ride and control, and all Rangers are now better off road thanks to an, about an extra inch of ground clearance on two-wheel drive models and about an inch and a half of extra ground clearance on four-wheel drive models, topping out at 10.4 inches of ground clearance before you even get up to the Raptor. Another big improvement is in the power department. While the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder carries over as the standard engine and still does 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 is now available as well, doing 315 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque in this application. Ford didn't yet specify if it'll be available on all trims or just some of them, but the trim lineup remains XL, XLT, and Lariat, along with the Raptor now. Both engines run through the 10-speed automatic. Max towing capacity is 7,500 pounds, and max payload is 1,805 pounds. If you do plan to tow, the Ranger is now available with a 360-degree camera system and the Pro Trailer Backup Assist from the F-150. Inside, the Ranger gets more technology, nicer materials, and improved fit and finish. The star of the show is the available 12-inch touchscreen and the 12.4-inch digital gauge cluster. Lower trims will still get an 8-inch digital gauge cluster and 10.1-inch touchscreen though, which should still be pretty nice, and even the XLT trim will have an option package to get the bigger touchscreen if you want it. There's also larger bins and storage areas, an available second glove box, and underseat uh, cargo bins in the back. Those rear seats also fold flat now to help carry larger items. Other handy features are an available integrated box sidestep, a 400 watt power inverter and outlet in the bed, and a wider bed overall as well, which now provides over four feet of width between the wheel wells for easier loading of large items. Zone lighting, another feature from the F-150, is now available on the Ranger as well for those dark camping nights. And as far as safety tech goes, it's available with blind spot monitoring with trailer coverage, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, and on Lariats you have the E-Shifter, and with that it enables you to be able to get the Active Park Assist 2.0, which does fully automated parallel and perpendicular parking. Now, let's move on to the Raptor. After years of watching the rest of the world get to enjoy the Ranger Raptor, it's finally coming to North America. It gets the 3 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6 that does 405 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque, which matches the torque of the new Chevy Colorado ZR2 and GMC Sierra AT4X, but has 95 more horsepower than those GM off-roaders. And it makes its presence known here in the Ranger Raptor thanks to an active exhaust system uh, with four different settings from quiet to Baja levels of loudness. And it also has an anti-lag system for boost on demand in Baja mode and it runs through a 10-speed automatic as well but does have a more advanced four-wheel drive system with an on-demand two-speed transfer case and front and rear locking differentials. It of course gets a unique suspension as well with Fox 2.5 inch live valve internal bypass shocks that are coilovers at the front and piggyback reservoirs at the rear and they're filled with Teflon infused oil which Ford says reduces friction and heat buildup for uninterrupted performance all day. It also gets lightweight aluminum upper and lower control arms and a long travel rear suspension with a watts linkage and trailing arms. It also gets reinforced front frame rails, front shock towers, rear shock brackets, suspension mounting points, and other key areas are reinforced there as well. There's also a front bash plate along with engine, transfer case, and fuel tank shields to protect that underbody. And as you can see, it also gets flared fenders, which help to contain those 33-inch KO3 all-terrain tires that are mounted on 17-inch wheels. A beadlock capable wheel is also going to be available as well. Uh, and then a front camera and a 360-degree view will also help you with navigating those trails. Inside, they get a sportier steering wheel with magnesium paddle shifters, unique seats with extra bolstering, six overhead upfitter switches, and orange stitching all throughout the cabin there, which uh, comes pretty much fully loaded, it seems, with the bigger screens, upgraded bang and and stereo, and all that there on those Raptor versions. Lastly, all Rangers will be built in Michigan with the 2.3 liter and Raptor models arriving late this summer, and the 2.7 liter models arriving a few months after in late fall. 
Lastly, the 2024 Ranger will start at $34,160 and the Ranger Raptor will start at $56,960 and those prices do include the destination charge. And for that Raptor version, that is about $7,000 higher than the starting price of a Colorado ZR2, but keep in mind you do get uh, about 100 more horsepower as well as some extra luxury there as well in the Ranger Raptor. And so overall, I think they're priced really well. But stay tuned and subscribe for more updates here on the Ranger Raptor going forward and hopefully my review on one uh, at some point in the future as well. Let me know your thoughts though on the Ranger Raptor in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.